Yeah, how's it going? Today is 15th of June, Saturday, and we are taking a look at the market and what kind of opportunities we can find. Uh, continuing a series of videos where we have been taking a look at infrastructure and rebuilding infrastructure in uh, Ukraine and how much capital was raised. From there we have progress into Europe and how potentially Europe is looking to protect its infrastructure with uh, three initiatives by Germany, France and Poland. How are we going to defend? I think it's called Sky Shield. Uh, that's the overall energy infrastructure. Well, digging around, I was uh, finding out some information when it comes to uh, some of the things that I think should be important. That would be connections, right, and overall networking, and who is sitting on the board of some of the energy companies within Ukraine. Uh, I don't know anything about it, by the way, <laughs> but I'm looking to understand it. So I'm going to be taking a look at some of these articles, and from those articles we're going to progress and taking a look at uh, uh, G7 meetings. What is Burisma, the Ukrainian energy firm caught between US presidential rivals? This article was published some time ago, 2020. Uh, let's quickly, there might be a lot of information that might be very important, uh, but we won't be able to delve deeper into uh, this article and try to understand everything what might be important. We're gonna uh, perhaps spend two minutes or so on this article and we're gonna progress to the next one. Uh, the once little known Ukrainian natural gas firm Burisma Holdings found itself through the central presidential impeachment storm earlier this year over its ties to the son of former US Vice President Joe Biden. Uh, this article uh, has been written some time ago, about four years, right? Uh, don't think, uh, I don't want to get too political, right? So I will skip a lot of information and uh, don't. It, it might be delving deeper and all those kind of things. Let's uh, skip all of this data, right? <laughs> yeah, only a part of uh, what I might consider being important that we do, what is Burisma Holdings. Uh, founded in 2002, Burisma Holdings is an oil and natural gas company owned by Ukrainian oligarch. Uh, let's keep names. He's a businessman who uh, previously served in public office in the country and one who has been subject to fraud investigation. All true, never convicted. Okay, okay. Uh, the uh, businessman, which uh, is based in Kiev, uh, but registered in Cyprus, it is holding company for several subsidiaries in the energy industry, including Asko, Pivich, Pari, Parashwa, Ukrainian, Nosfagazovka, Kompania. Okay, okay. So there's perhaps a lot of registrations. Uh, either way, there's not enough time. Let's keep all this data. It is one of the largest natural gas operations in Ukraine, as well as having further investments in Germany, Mexico, Italy, and Kazakhstan. Uh, according to your companies, produce 1.3 billion cubic meters of gas in 2018. And while it does not disclose its financial results, Estimated by the news agency, Rio Trust suggests that the level of production could have generated revenue upwards of $400 million, uh, right? So that's a quick summary, right? So from there, let's progress to your most recent article. Since we're taking a look at energy sector, right, and uh, energy and how energy might be produced and uh, what uh, different sources are available out there within Ukraine, all this kind of thing. So, so it's something of myself I'm interested in understanding. So in, an issue right now is entire infrastructure, right, when it comes to energy production and uh, it's uh, the entire infrastructure is under a lot of stress, right, it's not producing enough energy. And uh, World Reader is potentially going to address this issue, and uh, there's more to it. So I'm reading all this information for the first time, and I'm looking to understand it a little bit better. That would be BBC, Hunter Biden, and Burisma FBI source 
charged with lying about Biden bribe claims. So it's most recent uh, article that was released. So let's try to understand what it's all about. The next FBI information has been charged with making false statements about the alleged bribery scheme involving Ukrainian company President Joe Biden and his son Hunter. Uh, let's keep names. I don't know about outcome of some of those investigations, and the let's progress is accused of lying about Biden's accepting payments from energy firm Burisma. The Justice Department said, "Okay, so the additional names gave false statement for FBI because it, uh, he disliked. Uh, okay, there's more names and uh, the Republicans. Okay, there's political statement." Again, I have read this article <laughs> in 37 pages in indictment document released on Thursday. Special counsel, there's a name there, who have overseen the investigation of the Hunter Biden accused. Okay, there's more names, uh, false uh, derogatory information gave the FBI about the president and his son in June 2020. The information has provided after Mr. Biden has uh, cemented as Democratic president. Oh, okay, okay. So there is an uh, investigation launch, right? I, I wish I could read the entire article. Perhaps there is some more hard data, but they are only discussing names, names and who did what. Then there is no data. So what's investigation for what sums and why it's happening? Uh, I have dealt a little bit, and all of that would be sitting on the board of directors. So that's the way how I understood it, right? So how that happened, if uh, so myself, I'm looking to understand it, right? Perhaps later there might be outcome of uh, investigation, all those kind of things, so, so we can touch on that later. As of now, there's something that's happening with uh, energy infrastructure and a lot of governments looking to raise capital. To, uh, perhaps, I don't know, I don't know, let's progress. Uh, let's come back to a different article, it's something I was reviewing this morning, so I have read it, so <laughs> so I don't know what uh, what is happening with energy infrastructure, but that, uh, my, my personal belief, that will be very important in Ukraine and other parts of the world, energy infrastructure, and uh, it's under a lot of stress, but either way, let's progress, and uh, let's come back to UK and what's happening in UK, that will be Cabinet asked to approve next step towards the opening of the city's airport. City of Doncaster Don Council is due to take a next step in process to appoint operator later in the summer. So let's start, uh, let's read this article and let's try to understand what this article is all about. And I have already reached out to a council and let's see if we can have a response from a council and what will be the process going forward. The council cabinet has been asked to approve delegate powers to the director of corporate resources in consultation with the major the appoint operator who will be a allocated preferred bidder status before final contract can be concluded later in the year. Cabinet will hear next week after the nineteen. So in four days from now, the the council is currently engage in public procurement process to identify an operator with uh, the ability and expertise to take uh, steps necessary to reopen the airport, returning it to profitability and take forward the South Yorkshire Airport City concept, which is why the program of economic growth and regeneration uh, coupled it with the requirements for the Civil Aviation Authority to Establish air space following the airport closure in November 22. Uh, tenders are due to be returned on 17 of June 2024, following with the intense period of evaluation and clarification will take place to identify the submitted proposals provided the best uh, deal for Don Carter and the potential operation that is the best able to meet the challenge to reopen successful and thriving airport. The report also uh, highlights that the uh, planning restrictions, Article 8 uh, or Article 4 <laughs> direction, which prevents this as to be removed or dismantled from the airport site, that should be removed now. That can be consulted with a le uh, leaseholder. There is also other due diligence requirements that need to be met under the law. 
and the return statement from the council. So perhaps there is, might be a great opportunity when it comes to management of airport. I was taking a look at other airports as well, so it's not necessarily just this opportunity. There are so many across the UK for talented individuals who are looking for opportunities. With that being said, let's take a look at uh, this video perhaps, uh, just because uh, there is a lot of ground to cover, right? Uh, we were taking a look at energy, we're taking a look at infrastructure right now, airports, right? And from there, let's take a look at 5G and potential investments and some agreements that are being made. I haven't read this article again, I hope there's going to be some interesting information that will be uh, by uh, article published by a White House, so there might be a great. So let's uh, delve deep and try to understand. Uh, that would be June 13. A uh, very recent article that was published by Opal House. I've been recommended this article, by the way. I don't know why. <laughs> but I haven't read it, and it might be a credible source since it's a uh, government's website. So, might as well, perhaps, let's take a look at it and let's try to understand uh, what information what we might be able to find within press releases of. Uh, U.S. government that would be a fact sheet to partnership for global infrastructure investment at the G7 summit. And since we take a look at infrastructure, right, so infrastructure can be airports, is something that we are taking a look at, as well as energy production and oil extraction, since we were taking a look at oil and gas, right, so perhaps uh, no roads, all these kind of great things, right, so let's try to understand uh, this article and what information we might be able to find. At uh, 2004 G7 summit in Wasankwa, Italy, during PGI leader forum co-hosted by G7 presidency and uh, the United States, uh, President uh, Biden, G7 leader, affirmed their commitment in accelerating the sustainability and infrastructure investment throughout the partnership for global infrastructure investment. PGI, the G7 flagship infrastructure investment initiative. This market uh, or marks the third consecutive G7 side event of the PGI since the G7 leaders launched the initiative in 2002 in Almo. During the Wasumo summit, President Biden announced historical progress made on his commitments to PGI while joined by the other G7 leaders. Uh, let's keep all of his names, Presidents Biden and all the leaders affiliated their commitment in a lucky public and all private capital for property by the risking and all driving layered investment across sectors in partner countries. Additionally, leaders discuss how PGI connects energized like-minded countries, the private sector, multilateral development banks and development finance uh, institutions to drive sustainable and transparent uh, investment in quality infrastructure. To date, the United States has mobilized more than $60 billion towards PGI investment throughout federal financing grants and leveraging private sector investment over the last three years, doubling contributions announced at uh, last year G7 summit. So potentially 30 billion, now it's 60 billion, which is kind of great, but I think it's a mixture of grants and all loans, and uh, perhaps 8% of loans or so, it could be more than that <laughs> compared to grants, but either way, we will continue to ramp up investment uh, to work towards a goal of mobilizing 200 billion by 2027 as part of the broader G7 target of 600 billion by 2027. So since I'm reading this uh, article, uh, I was just trying to understand uh, what uh, White House statement is. They would be looking to potentially raise a lot of capital and invest that capital in uh, a lot of initiatives, including infrastructure projects. But I think only thing what they do actually looking to do, they're looking to match other governments and what other governments are doing. So they're look taking a look at other governments and they're looking to match it. So that's what's really happening. <laughs> uh, so it's overall statement. Uh, uh, I can take a look at the uh, United Kingdom and BBC and their own view on the same subject. And uh, we can take a look at that as well. But I don't want to make this video too long, right? G7 
uh, that's uh, seven member countries, 30% of global GDP, uh, GDP uh, one of 10 world's population. Uh, uh, it used to be G8, but uh, either way, let's progress, right? An important part and some of the things that uh, G7 uh, during this meeting where we're discussing that with the G7 nations are now working on the scheme to tackle the interest of those assets have been uh, interest on assets that potential was taking over from Russia, right? That would be G7 and the new nations have also frozen about 325 billion of Russian financial assets which were held in their territories such as foreign currency reserves, Russian Central Bank and they potentially would freeze those and they will take a loan against interest which is kind of gets interesting idea but either way uh, it's good I'm out to you 50 billion right and we are taking a look at this and that they were discussing and where they would potentially be spending that money right they're gonna be interested in rebuilding infrastructure and what kind of infrastructure energy infrastructure and or similar projects that they're gonna be rebuilding as well as arming the nation and they're gonna arm in a way where they're gonna build their own capabilities or they're gonna arm in a way where they're gonna give a lot of old hardware I don't know I don't know but that's some of the data I thought it's worth touching on and from there uh, we could potentially progress in taking a look at other governments the same article as BBC right and they take a look at Belt and Road Initiative expansion plans but that's I don't think G7 <laughs> I think this is what G7 is looking to match some of the infrastructure projects are done by uh, Chinese government right so it's kind of interesting I guess but I don't think that would be the point of G7 I don't think China is a part, uh, no member of G7. <laughs> but either way, so I thought I'll touch on that and uh, the <laughs> I don't want to take away anything from the things that they have accomplished and everything. I don't know if it's a good uh, vibe to finish this video on, but they are looking to match existing infrastructure projects uh, compare and compare perhaps to what other governments are doing and the investments are being made so that it is more to build a road initiative. And they're looking to uh, US and all other countries looking to invest. Uh, it's something that they invest previously, that would be 30 billion. Uh, potentially now they have raised 60 billion and uh, with higher targets investing in similar initiatives compared to Belt and Road Initiative, right? According to BBC. <laughs> Just closing that. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.